go for it. Checking recording, awesome. <clears throat> okay, so hello everyone, this is Dr. Vince Wong speaking uh, on the Brain Training University. So today we have our first guest, um, the one and only Matt Saltis, otherwise known as Upgraded Investor on Instagram. So check him out if you aren't following him already. Good to be here. Yeah, Matt is um, a really impressive guy. He's super humble. Um, I've known Matt for a little while now, um, and having been to a few of his events, I can honestly say he knows more about real estate than me. So um, any questions on real estate, he's the guy to go to. Um, as I said before, Upgraded Investor is his name on Instagram. So welcome to the show, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Vince. It is awesome to be here, man. And, you know, really pleased that we're having this conversation today. Is someone who who I learned a lot from in the, in the mental health space, which is a massive passion of mine. So yeah, excited to see where this conversation goes for us. Awesome, awesome. We had a little chat off camera as well, um, just to warm up. Um, but yeah, we should be warmed up and ready to go by now. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Great. Um, so we wanted to cover a few things on this episode. Um, as I was saying to Matt before, um, basically, Part of the formula on the Brain Training University's formula for happiness includes money. And it's a topic that not many people are willing to talk about. It's sort of a hush-hush thing in society at the moment. Um, but I believe more people need to know about financial education, uh, educate themselves with the right people who know what they're talking about, such as Matt. Um, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to ask Matt a few questions about how real estate investing works um, and any other investing techniques that he would recommend. Love that. And that's what it's all about. I mean, as you're saying, Vince, for me, real estate investing, it is as much, in fact, it's more about the mindset and, and the energy that we have sure. than it is about the actual <laughs> property. <learning> so. <laughs> yeah. So I love that you're taking notes. I'm always taking notes. And that is what a great investor always does as well, is we always take notes because there's something special that happens when we put pen or pencil to paper. And the biggest thing that I've found is we actually start to manifest our goals and we start to manifest the things that we write down. Otherwise, they become busy thoughts in our mind and our mind is an idea generating machine. So we've got to capture them on paper and, and I love that about you. So. I mean, real estate for me, huge passion and massive, massive relevance to mindset because the, it's foundational. And, and the challenge with real estate investing is a lot of people ask, how can I get involved in property? If I don't have any money, you know, I'm looking to save money for my first house. How do I get involved in, in real estate investing? And then I often flip the whole, the whole paradigm, which is you don't need to buy a house for yourself. You should be buying a house that pays you money every month. And at that point in time, it all comes about how much self mastery have we done to get that first deal. So uh, yeah, love to dive a bit deeper on that with you today. And also just share really how the mind is, is the key to everything we do in business and life. Absolutely. You've mentioned the really key point about mindset. So why don't we talk a bit more about your mindset and how, what the sort of tools you use to get your mindset right? Yeah. So I remember when I started out in business, I, I was doing a lot of personal development and, and my journey began, I, I always, I grew up around an environment where my, my father, he started his own business from our house, which, which inspired me from a really young age. I remember him getting made redundant. We just moved house to South Wales from Bath, my birthplace wow. in England. Yeah, and, and we just moved house within six to nine months of us moving house from my dad's job. He had been commuting every day for two years. Within six to nine months, he got made redundant. And he decided to go set up for himself. And that inspired the entrepreneur idea within me from a young age. And, and really seeing that and how my dad grew his business from the basement of our house to having multiple offices in the UK and a team of up to 30 people at times, seeing that growth it was something that laid the foundation within me and it gave me that mindset where you know what when adversity hits us when challenge hits us mm -hmm. often the biggest opportunity for growth is on the other side of what we're seeing i really agree with that and 
having that understanding is so key because we all have challenges in life. And I think as an investor, there's so many setbacks. The reason most people don't manage their income or manage their, their job or, or go and follow their purpose or real is invest in real estate is ultimately because we get our first bit of challenge, our first bit of tension, and most people give up. Mm. And the key separator is that it is 80% mindset, but it's higher than that. It's actually more 99% mindset and 1% mechanics. Mm. Well, that's it. I, I remember when I started out in business, you know, my journey to becoming an investor took me through doing civil engineering at university, thinking I would learn about real estate investing. Didn't really teach me much though about money. And so that's when I went in the journey into the city to learn the truth about money and work with investment bankers uh, and then into private equity, which, which laid the foundation for me. But, but all the talk at the time within the personal development seminars I attended, the books I read, the mentors I listened to was this 80, 20 rule of mindset to mechanics. And when you actually go out and you take action in your business, like you have Vince, as you'll know, it's, it seems an even higher ratio mindset to mechanics, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it's funny because human beings, we're always looking for the technical answers. We're always looking for that. But actually, until we master ourselves, we have got zero foundation set on which to build a business or on which to actually build a life value. Exactly. Like, and if you think of your life as a business and if you feed it the right things and make it um, better in all areas, well, for me, my definition of success, if I move aside a second, um, is, is behind me. So um, if you go through all of these things and persist and do the things that you know are right for you uh, and are good for you, then eventually you will be successful in different areas. It's just a matter of hard work and persistence at the end of the day. That's how I see it anyway. And it's a perfect image as well, the iceberg. Mm. Now, the majority of what we need to move lies beneath the water. Mm. And people are only looking at the bit above the water. And so the journey through becoming a better business person or by going into business in the first place, for me, it was all about understanding what were the subconscious drivers within my mind that were holding back the things on the surface. And when we bring the unconscious more conscious, as you'll know, Vince, and you'll, you're an expert in this space, when we, when we bring the unconscious habits and thought loops to the conscious mind, we can start to detect the opportunities to remove the bad habits. And, and so that's been the journey for me. And I mean, it's a consistent, persistent, without quit journey of exploring more about ourselves in business. And that's why I love it. It's, it's all about the mind and the development that we have as a human being. Absolutely. 100% right. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. I mean, it's a big passion of mine because I just love mindset and I always have, but one of the things actually about mindset that a lot of people talk about is is the the forceful mindset and you've got to be careful of that so i want to say this to people who are looking to be to grow their businesses or to maybe consider a journey in business be wary that a lot of people will talk all about hustle grind grit determination push shove being ruthless being audacious being bold they don't actually talk about being nice to people and they don't actually talk about how to have a fulfilling life and how to actually connect with human beings. And so for me, that's the element of mindset that the super successful have that I've met. Look at Richard Branson. He's a trademark of someone who lives a fulfilling life, empowers other leaders, and who gets it. And his motto in life is to have, is to have fun before anything else. Everything has to be aligned with his, his core values of having fun first. And he loves what he does whilst pursuing massive value and service to people because he lives an inspired life. And the challenge is there's a lot of people out there, especially in the personal development space. In fact, a lot of people out there who will talk a good game and even potentially have big businesses. But I'm telling you, it's the old way of doing business. The old way of doing business is of being a ruthless individual who's cutthroat and likes to stamp on people. That is not the way business is done today, in my, my opinion. I believe that we're moving to a more upgraded level of consciousness of humanity, and that requires us to master the mind in a whole new way, 
which is why this information that you're putting out, Vince, is so valuable to people because you're going to keep people up to date with the cutting edge technology, you know, spiritual technology, which really is what the mind is about at times. And also just understanding the technology we have as human beings to maximize our own true potential. And just to emphasize on your point about business, the way of doing business changing, the old way used to work, but that was before a time of social media where people could tell their friend, oh, this guy fucked me over and you'd know in like a second as opposed to months sometimes in the old way with the snail mail and letters instead of just social media, everything's so instant. So the communication level between customer and your target audience is so much quicker nowadays. So you can't game that anymore. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Well, in fact, you're touching on a great point here, which is all around sales and marketing in business. Because for me, sales and marketing are the, they're the cure all to most of our problems, if not all of our problems in business. And marketing is senior to sales. Until we market, until we bring the leads in, we're not going to close sales. So it doesn't matter how good at selling we are, if we're not marketing correctly and understanding human psychology. Because human psychology is what marketing is all about. And, and marketing, people think it's, it's making things look good. It's making things look presentable. Well, it's more communication, <laughs> right? Exactly. It's about connecting with customers emotionally on a level where they want to buy your product. That's what marketing is if you want to break it down. So if you can master that, um, if you understand the mind like I do, it's very easy to understand what your customer wants. So it's about reverse engineering your target audience and then giving them what they want. <laughs> totally and that's that's what i love about understanding the mind is it is so so powerful because it will generate your top line in business and most people are operating at a level of consciousness where they believe they're still a victim and therefore they have to control other people to behave the way that they want them to behave and the way that business and life actually operates is at a higher level of order within the mind and within our consciousness as more connected, more compassionate human beings, where if we step into our own authentic truth and own our identity, we will magnetize the right energy and the right people, coincidences, synchronicity, circumstances will show up because we're in alignment with our truth. Who resonate with your message and who actually resonate with it, not fake <laughs> resonate. So I think it's so powerful what you just said. Now, thanks, Vincent. I mean, it, it is super powerful. If people understand the formula for business today is a value led society where if we give without expectation, we start to open the door to a future relationship. And it's the same analogy as dating. Most people go and meet someone and try to hard close them or hard sell them or they're too pushy. And we all see it. It's the, like a social media now. The amount of LinkedIn people I have inbounding me all the time, they don't have a clue. It's unbelievable. The amount of Instagram people who inbound me all the time, they don't have a clue. It's unbelievable. And it's because they don't lead with value and service first. They lead with, I want money from you. Yeah. And that is the old way of doing business. Today, we've got something called Amazon, which means if you want a transactional where you don't, in, you don't deal with a person and you don't have to go into a hard sell, you go to Amazon. Any business of value outside of Amazon today is not built on transactions. It's built on relationships. Exactly. So I, I truly believe that understanding the mind is foundational and the key, people have to understand how valuable your podcast is, Vince, because it's the fundamental core to expanding your life and your impact, your service, your ambition into 2020 and long beyond. It is the future of where businesses are going. Absolutely. And if we can help some people along the way, then <laughs> it will be a mass. That would be a miracle for me. So that's the goal. Exactly. Yeah, and, goes to, and goes to you, Vince. I mean, in terms of your podcast community, in terms of what you're putting out to the world, I'm a massive fan because of how you, you bring your experience from the past to the fore of, of business today. And you're someone who's transitioned out of, out of a former job within the NHS. And now you're growing your own business and growing an impact, but you're also stepping into more of your truth. And I mean, how, how does that feel from a mindset perspective? What's been one of the biggest shifts that you have felt in your identity since you left traditional employment? Sure. Well, as you said, stepped more into my truth. I knew I couldn't uh, stay there forever because I was looking at my seniors who were 
decades ahead of me and they weren't happy. And I sort of came to the realization that if this is the direction I'm going and that's what they're telling me, why would I want to go in that direction? So it sort of sparked a little, um, yeah, like a spark in me to start getting into self-development, to start improving myself. And that's where the idea of mindset came in. And the more I learned about the brain and how it tricks you into thinking things that aren't even real and you make up stories in your own head about um, yourself that aren't even true. So um, it, can, it can be a bit of a mind fuck for lack of a better word. Yeah. Well, uh, might have to be that later, not sure yet. <laughs> but sometimes it can be a bit of a mess in your own head where you talk too much to yourself, where you just don't get the input from others. To act. If you talk too much, you don't get the sensory input you need to understand that all, at the end of the day, all you need to do is believe in yourself. Um, yeah. And that's how you step forward into the next step, into the next step. And I found that helps me so much in business. Like every time I do that next step, I just... It's like you're so much further ahead of everyone else who hasn't moved. <laughs> Love that. That is that is the thing. When we get attached to the process and not the events, that's when we can keep moving forwards through a state of flow in the persistent pursuit of our potential. And and there's a lot of talk, obviously, with the mind and, and all about purpose and understanding what drives human human action and human behavior. Uh, and then there's also a lot of talk about motivation in the space. Uh, but ultimately, if we find our purpose and we live an inspired life and work becomes our vehicle through which we express our truth and our vehicle to expand our self-expression, as a byproduct, we're leaning into growth and contribution, which are the two highest faculties that we can have as a human being on the planet. When we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, they're at the top, growth and contribution. Like Tony Robbins says, and if we can lean into those because we understand our purpose, we understand why we are here, and we understand what it really is all about each day, then we live an inspired life and work no longer becomes a chore. And, and people who look at people like you and I and, and sort of see our, our work ethic, I know you're someone who's, who's very driven, very motivated, and very inspired, most importantly. And, and the inspiration comes because you're connected to your truth. So everything you just said, people just re-listen to that and understand the power when you upgrade your identity and you own your true self. And if you know there's something more inside of you and you're currently in an environment which does not allow you to express that, your goal is to transition outside of that. Not necessarily immediately, but you've got to, you've got to check in with yourself and design a roadmap to leave or to cultivate a greater environment to upgrade your mind and that's the journey I had to go through in the city I, I treated it as a learning machine to learn everything I could in the city of London with an investment bank in private equity world to then say you know what I'm now ready to step out and own my truth and I was doing the, the personal development reading the books immersing myself in mentors getting to the right events getting around the right people who were there ahead of me mm. and that's what inspired me and connected with me with my purpose and allowed me to to take the leap because you go beyond your former sense of identity where you think you've got to be an employee to work for a paycheck absolutely and i'd like to just emphasize on that point you talked about um basically surrounding yourself with the right people and i think this is so important and it's not talked about enough um if you're surrounded by people who are constantly bringing you down constantly talking negative about you those are people you might want to consider distancing yourself from. It's something that I've personally experienced where my previous group of friend circles, for example, um, may not have been as supportive as my current group of friend circles. Um, and in that sense, I've noticed the change. Just putting yourself in the right environment is so important. And from a brain perspective, um, there's something called mirror neurons, where that's where there are neurons which are basically dedicated to copying what other people do so if you see someone act a certain way you start to copy or mirror their own those people's actions so the people that you keep really close to you um the core group of people um those you have to really watch those relationships if you want to be successful in any area of life including happiness yeah absolutely right and the way you, the, everything you said there is spot on because for me, it became a journey of replacement as well, as opposed to deletion. 
Because mm. the moment that you step into your true identity, your truth and your authentic life, and you live into an upgraded version of yourself with that longer term perspective over where you're going to manage the immediate problems that you face and the challenges that come your way. When we step into that, we suddenly start hanging around with different types of people. And the power of that means that we are able to replace the former people who we hung around with, with new people because we're automatically in different environments and you don't even have to think about it. It's a natural byproduct of stepping into our truth, our environment, our network upgrades, the synchronicities, the coincidences that we want to show up will show up just when we're not expecting them. We receive the gifts that we're due to, due to have for our value put out there and for our persistence. And that is, that is the power is we will start to see evidence. And so all the time I go through investing for me is, is so much more than just an action. It's not just about buying a house and, and generating cash flow. Investing for me is about getting to an upgraded state of being, you know, a state of living where we are leaning into our true potential because we have that long-term mindset. And because we're being an investor and you don't just have to invest money, we can invest our energy. And in fact, investing energy is what we're doing every second of every day in this very moment. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to what money is, money is actually energy. Mm -hmm. End of the day, money is, is a circulation of energy. So when I look at money, I'm like, how can I circulate value? How can I start conducing flow? And ultimately, the reason I believe humans exist is to create more flow in each other's life. We're here to flow, not to hoard, not to take, not to get, but just to flow and to circulate and to be a channel through which value is served and received. And when we get, can connect to flow, and this is where meditation comes in for me as well, when we connect to flow and connect to our higher self and allow that energy to flow through us, that is where so much more calmness and presence can come to allow us to deal with the tensions in our life. And unless we have faith, unless we allow our prefrontal cortex to open up, as you'll know about Vince, unless we actually lean into our higher self, higher faculties of expression, mm -hmm. we're gonna feel our reptilian mind of fear, of yeah. judgment, of mm -hmm. I care about what I'm being, yeah, I care about what other people are thinking, that's gonna take over our actual truth. And so most people, I keep seeing their paradigm holding them back, which is their lower part of the brain. You know, the, the paradigm's holding them down. The reptilian mind is holding them down. And it's like, just get out of that. Get out of that state. You need to upgrade your state of being. And, and so for me, investing is a way of living. Investing is not just buying houses, owning them. I look at myself as an upgraded investor in every area of my life. How can I be a better investor? Mm. Good, really good way to put it, especially the point about um, money being in circulation and how energy is money. Because I think a lot of people listening to this will get confused when they hear that. Um, I understand because having gone through the process myself, but just to explain to the listeners, um, yeah, if, if you um, money is a form of value, people will only pay you. X amount if they believe that it's worth X amount of value. So the more value that you can put out in the world, the, the way Matt said it in terms of energy, which I completely agree with, um, the more value you put out, the more money you'll get in return. So for example, a doctor is worth more than someone who can just flip burgers at McDonald's because of the level of training they've gone through. Same wise, you have to think of how you can add value to society in your own unique way. Um, in order to make money in your, on your terms, um, which I think is really good. Great. Totally. And actually, just to break down how we are all energy, uh, is to make it super simple for us, what we need to realize is ultimately everything that exists in our material world comes down to cells. It comes down to a cellular level of existence. And if we go deeper and deeper and deeper, if we look at the Large Hadron Collider and what it's trying to discover, it, it is what are these particles? What are they? And if you go down to it, ultimately, we are all quanta, quantum mechanic, quantum. We are quantum particles existing in an energetic state. So my physical body is merely the boundary between my skin cells and the air cells, if you want to look at it that way. But they're, they're ultimately forms of wave vibration. When we get down to the quantum level, 
and we look at these particles and we look at the likes of quarks and all the rest of it within the, within the actual nucleus of the cell, they've done the tests and the tests have shown that we are waves. So when I talk about investing and getting to that upgraded state of being, most people, if you're looking at the screen, I'm trying to do the wave particles on video here. So if we are waves, <laughs> Vince has got it, right? Vince has got it with the arms. So we are waves and most, most of our emotions, we swing all the way up and then all the way down to negativity, all the way up. And if you look at most people out there, because they haven't become masters of themselves, masters of their mind, they are so out of balance and disconnected with their spiritual self which is this, the light of connecting to our higher faculties, meditation and, and wisdom and, and growth and understanding those higher faculties, which is really the spiritual journey of being a human, I believe. Mm. Regardless of what religion you may have, it's not about that. It's more, I'm talking here about our higher faculties and connecting to our higher self and feeling that, you know, we do have that creator and we are here to have that impact. When we lean into that, what we can see is that ultimately we are here to continue upgrading our state of being and to level out the playing field. Because when we're masters of our minds, we're constantly in that phase of rebalancing because our attention and our intention is, this, is set. And our attention is what directs our energy. And so we become masters of our energetic state. And so we'll still keep traveling like waves. We'll still have the emotional peaks and troughs, but we will minimize the amplitude of vibration. And for me, that's what getting to an upgraded life is all about. An upgraded life is so that we're not traveling in, in huge distorted wave patterns of huge peaks, huge troughs, but minimizing them towards center. And that's where meditation, wisdom, guidance, connection to our faith, comes in for me cool diagram there to explain Love that but basically it's about the waveforms and um so what other sort of tools you use matt to minimize the impacts of uh, emotional a potential emotional response or negative notion what other tools you use personally great question so for me i've been on a journey of i'm consistently on this journey always looking to learn more always looking to grow always looking to expand even this conversation right here i'm learning from you i'm, I'm always learning and whenever you ask questions even i'm learning as well because you get me to to analyze my own self in a different way to what i'm used to thinking and for me you know it's 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 been about understanding how emotions arise in our brain so this is the way I, I look at it nowadays, is we have, a, we have a stimulus. We have a situation that happens, and immediately our brain, based on our beliefs, our patterns of thinking of the past, our environmental conditioning, the way we were brought up, because the ages of zero to seven, we haven't yet got our conscious mind formed. Everything's going into our programming, our subconscious mind, mm -hmm. which we could go into as well. I mean, that's a whole different matter of topic for you. Yeah, exactly. And our conditioning from the age of zero to seven, when it goes into our subconscious mind, which dictates our future behaviors, we think we keep on telling ourselves to go to the gym, to do, to, you know, mm -hmm. get this new job, to do something else. But until we change that subconscious programming, we're not going to change our behavior. And mm -hmm. for me, the emotional side of things, it's been understanding that a situation happens and I've attached my beliefs, my conditioning, or my judgment to that situation to therefore feel a certain way and that feeling will then dictate a high amplitude or a low amplitude of vibration if you're looking at it as a positive or a negative emotion mm. so what i now look at it as is if that situation occurs and i can be more conscious about my thought more directing towards my attention more more aware that i've had this peak in emotion mm. It could, be, it could be a person, it could be a situation happening, it could be some challenge coming, coming up. I could feel maybe... Just today as well, yeah. I'm congratulating on dealing with getting locked out of the house on the, on the way back. <laughs> so I'm a real estate investor and I got locked out of my own house today. Hey, it happens to the best of us, I'm telling you. And so how did I manage that? How, what, I, what I did is I, I came back to a state of understanding that it's a challenge that's come up and it's got an opportunity attached to it as well. 
So every situation that comes up in our life, it has a positive, has a benefit, and it has a third side. It's a, it's a coin. So think of a pound coin because it's quite thick. If you're here in the UK, a pound coin is quite a thick coin. Mm -hmm. So it's got, how many sides has it got? Two sides, or three sides if you count the edge. There but... we are, three sides. Exactly. <laughs> so it's got the positive, for example, the negative, mm -hmm. and on the edge, I like to think of it as awareness. That's the state of balance. Mm -hmm. And so for me, whenever I have, have an emotional judgment, I, I need to trigger myself. And look, we're never perfect at this because we'll all have situations that impact us and that we start to attach blame, shame, judgment, victim consciousness to if we're not careful. But if we can start to upgrade our level of self-awareness over time, which is a consistent journey of self-mastery, consistent journey of channeling our thoughts through silence, affirmation, meditation, visualization, and, and the right habits in terms of our mental life, when we can do that, we start to see that actually every situation has a positive and a negative. I mean, we can even get extreme here and look back to the horrendous things that have happened in the past. Yes. Such as in Nazi Germany, but then you look at that situation and what if that situation happened to ultimately upgrade the level of consciousness of humanity to reconnect humans with greater compassion, love connection for oneself. And if that ha event hadn't happened, maybe would, would not have got there. You know, and, and we look at the isolate, former isolation of Germany with East and West and then how the Berlin Wall came down. That's a classic signification of greater connection. And I believe that ultimately in the future, as we raise our consciousness together and the Internet has even done this for us, it's put us all on a global platform to do business. What the Internet's actually done is it's upgraded the consciousness of humanity tremendously. Yet we're still not there catching up with the technology. And so. I believe that geographical boundaries will be blurred. We'll start to realize that actually we're all connected. There will not be any more wars, no more conflict. We'll see greater unity, love, compassion. All of this fight between USA, the Middle East, and all the rest of it, it won't even be possible because we're far more highly evolved human beings. And I believe that's where we're going towards as a, as a human race. And there's all these wake-up calls, these signs now on the planet that that is the feedback mechanism that's also actually, yes, it, it is horrendous that the far, forest fires are happening in Australia, but maybe it's also the opportunity to awaken humanity to actually look after our environment. And sometimes challenge has to get pretty damn hard in our life. We have to hit rock bottom before people wake up at a mainstream level. That's a great way to put it. Sometimes the bad can be part of the greater good um, is sort of the, the, the gist of what you were saying <laughs> that's what i got from. yeah i mean i ultimately i it, it's coming from that place of balanced awareness which is so tough and i'm not i'm never perfect at this oh, but it, and it's been a consistent journey of trying to remove the former emotional triggers that are still dictating my behavior so i give you an example i had a lot of negative beliefs about money in the past money doesn't grow on trees yeah. have you heard you know what were some of yours Vince, in the past yeah. I had all of them because my, my parents are accountants, so they were really stingy with money as well. So it was like, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. Love that. So I've yeah. been in a similar situation too. That's why I can relate to you so well. It's, it's the, the challenge we have is we're conditioned in our natural environment to think money is the root of all evil. Well, I, I disagree with that. Money is, is a vehicle to which to decide what you want to do with it. Some people will use it for good, some people for bad. Exactly. It just expands your power in terms of what you can do with the tool. If you are an arsehole with no money, I think you'll also be an arsehole with money. And if you're a nice person with money, you'll be nice without money as well. That's how I see it. Like, yeah. it works both ways. And Expansion of who you re we really are, you know, as humans. And, and that's the thing. I, I just believe that the mental health space is totally... It, it is going to exact, it's going to exponentially explode over the next decade. I have zero doubts about that. The mental health space is here for the long term because we've neglected it as a society for so long. We've been conditioned by governments, by politicians, by uh, propaganda to, to think that we need to believe what they're telling us. And actually, we're now going through a reconditioning process and a wake-up call, which is going to connect us back to our truth. Exactly. 
Um, my way of helping with the Brain Training University is to bring my take from a doctor's perspective um, on brain health, because what I found is brain health equals mental health. If you take care of your brain in the mm. your brain will function better. You'll have better thoughts. Thoughts at the end of the day, which has, by the way, been proven scientifically, um, to be electrical signals running from brain cells to brain cells. Exactly. Any complexities to it, um, which I will be sharing on this podcast. Um, yeah, get, and I guess getting your take on it is really making me think as well. And I'm learning so much from you, Matt. So thank you. That's oh, Vince. Uh, yeah. We both <laughs> from each other. That's the great thing about the right peer groups, the right environment. Mm. Proximity is truly power. And you know, you've seen you're someone who invests in yourself to join masterminds, to join events, and to get around the right environments of people. Mm. I, I truly believe it's transformative in terms of how we manage our brain and ultimately our mind. And a great point actually that you talked on, talked about there with brain house. Now one of the biggest passions I have is for nutrition as well and how nutrition is so foundational. And I know this is a huge thing for you, Vince. It is so foundational to mental health and to brain cognition, brain functioning. I mean, they've even got evidence now to show that Alzheimer's, yes, a, a brain disease is actually, there's a load of evidence out there now to suggest it's type three diabetes caused by excess sugar consumption and toxicity in the, in the, in the foods that we eat, potentially. Alzheimer's, in my, my hypothesis, I, it's not 100% proven, but it kind of almost is, um, is that Alzheimer's starts in the gut. So what you eat affects you so much. Um, gut health is so important for your brain because if you don't take care of your gut, you can get infections. You can, if you have the wrong nutrition, as you said, your brain won't be fed the right things. It won't be able to have the building blocks necessary to create the brain chemicals of happiness, like dopamine, serotonin, and the multitude of other chemicals that are involved. But yeah, at the end of the day, you need to feed your mind, not only yeah. content like this, but um, feed your brain healthy food so that it can be a healthy brain to function at its best. And that's not always easy. Um, I'm not personally an angel when it comes to food, but I do try and eat healthily, like you say. Listen, why don't we talk a bit more about nutrition? What's your take on that? Yeah, so nutrition, huge, huge area of passion for me because I invest in my health as the basis of everything I do. It, if my health's not there, how am I going to show up? How am I going to serve people? How am I going to help people solve a problem? What example am I showing if I turn up without being to my highest energetic self. So everything I do is focused on energy, which we've talked about a lot today. Mm. Energy, what can I do to upgrade my state, raise my energy levels and have that higher level of, of focus, of productivity, of hyper clarity, hyper momentum. And for me, a few of my hacks, number one is I have a highly ketogenic diet because I understand the power when I limit my carbohydrate intake. and I Let's double down because I'm I'm not too familiar on that. So why don't we talk? Yeah, what, yeah. So have carbs, for example. So effectively, the human the human body and our energetic system has two ways to burn fuel. The number one way, which is used by the vast majority, ninety eight ninety nine percent plus of Western civilization, mm -hmm. is burning glucose or sugar for fuel. Yeah, but that's not the only way. The other alternative is we burn fats for fuel and we ultimately elevate ketone levels in our blood system, which mm -hmm. then fuels our mind and, op and, and gives us hyper clarity, hyper focus, hyper, hyper sense of energy, so to speak, because the fat cells and the ketones are so much more efficient at energy conversion than glucose. And so, I believe fully that in the future, we're going to adapt to have a far more healthy fat diet, uh, likely move towards more ketogenic diet as our ancestors used to have. You know, the challenge we've got in modern society is you go to a supermarket and it baffles me how the vast majority is super high sugar, high carbohydrate food. And thankfully, I went on a journey before I went into self-development, really my whole thing was health and nutrition. So I was an overweight child. I struggled with my weight all the time. 
And yet I worked out so hard. I was playing rugby five times a week, I was playing tennis. I was like, why am I the fat one, <laughs> you know? And I thought I was eating healthy because I didn't eat processed foods, but I was eating too many carbohydrates. And you just compare yourself to average, if, and like I was back then, and you think that actually I'm doing fine because I'm just comparing myself to everyone else and I'm eating healthier than them. But the root cause was that I wasn't producing ketones in my body and therefore I was burning glucose for, short, for fuel. And, and with all of the testing that I've done personally myself and all of the research I've looked into, a couple of great people who truly speak the truth is uh, Dr. Mark Hyman. I suggest everyone looks into him. Dr. Mark Hyman is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Dr. Daniel Pomper as well. Those two guys understand the power of a large ketogenic diet. There's others out there like Max Lugavere, a younger guy who I connect with well. My friend Ben Azadi too. Uh, he, these guys understand the truth behind nutrition because I've been immersed in this space for years. And it's a super like the the amount of clarity that we get as business owners and as entrepreneurs when we're in a ketogenic state is unbelievable and it's not for look i i believe that it can be for the vast vast majority of human beings on the planet uh they've tested this and and some of the evidence is unbelievable towards what it could eradicate i mean you're the doctor here vince so i'm not going to step into your territory but i just for me personally i i believe if we eat a largely plant-based diet. I mean, I eat 80 to 90% plus plants, and I'm wow. talking low starch plants, so cruciferous greens, uh, you know, low carbohydrate vegetables, so not, potato, not loads of potatoes, not loads of root vegetables. I will eat some at times if I wanna break the keto state. And it's all about intermittent ketosis. It's not like you need to be in ketosis all of the time, but the power of intermittent ketosis is huge. And I normally break the ketosis by adding maybe an apple. And an, an apple will be enough to kick you out of ketosis potentially, or adding even uh, certain starchy carbohydrates, sweet potato and healthy carbohydrates, natural foods, rice at times. Uh, you know, white rice because it's got less bacteria than brown rice, which is another thing. You know, there's so many things out there in mainstream nutrition that I believe need to be flipped in the coming years. Mm. And so that's why I just say, hey, look at those people I mentioned because they're incredible and really at the cutting edge of the latest science in optimum nutrition. Dave Asprey, another one. Dave Asprey, another guy, bulletproof guy. And uh, he, he's got it too. Cool. Um Absolutely. Uh, nutrition is so important. And it's also, I find quite a complex topic to talk about because there's so many avenues you can go down in nutrition. Um, I, I'll look more into the ketosis side of things. Um, I kind of do my own form of ketosis in the form of fasting because that puts you exactly. in well. So I'm a big fan of that. Maybe I'll talk about that on another episode because that's a entirely different topic well so you talk you just raised a very good point which i'll briefly mention and that is there's there's really two ways to go into ketosis number one is you starve yourself so you basically fast yeah or you eat no carbohydrates that's the second way you eat very low carbohydrates and largely fats and actually you limit your protein intake because if you have excess protein in the body you end up converting it to glucose anyway so it it actually, if you eat too much, if we take on too much protein, it doesn't necessarily get utilized in the body. It gets converted more to, to sugar. So I, I look at it as typically most of my calories will come from the fats, but most of the volume of food will come from greens and good vegetables, like good low carbohydrate plant-based foods, you know, and then healthy fats, nuts, seeds, olive oil, coconut oil, coconuts, uh, I eat fish as well. And, and then the other thing to say is exogenous ketones is another way to shortcut the path, but you've got to have the right products. There's a lot of products out there that aren't actually healthy supplements. So I would just warn people when they're getting the right supplements, if you want more information, obviously I can help them too. Awesome. Um, I don't want to get too technical on this one about nutrition, because that's something I'll be covering in more detail later. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you make such a great point nutrition is one of the most important things when it and it's not talked about enough especially when it comes to mental health i would say nutrition is one of the most important things mm. 
don't hear many other people say that. <laughs> so I think it's a great point. Well, that's it. And that's why I wanted to emphasize it a touch today, Vince, is because I know it's such a big part of your message. And I want people to realize that nutrition is is so key. It is so key. And I'm an investor and I, I'm a real estate investor. And all of this, all of this which we're sharing is the root, it is the foundation to building the right strategies to then go out and be a better investor every day. And be a better you as well. Like um, if you're a business owner, you you are the forefront of the business. As a person, you have to take care of everything as the owner. So you have to have the energy to be able to do all these things you want to do. And the best way to have more energy to do everything you want to do is to look after your own health. Because if you look after your own health, you'll have more energy to, let's say, do two meetings as opposed to two. So there's, there's ways to look at it. Um, I personally start with health being the core of everything I do. I love that. It's the base. It's the base of the pyramid, everyone. If we sort out our health, then we can start to figure out, great, what, what do we do next? Because if we don't have health, we're no service to anybody. And it's no, no point being a billionaire when you're stuck in bed and ill. Yeah, exactly. Money means nothing if you don't have health, especially if you're dead. So take care of your health, guys. Um, <laughs> a good point to mention if you're ever unsure about any medical problems, always consult a doctor. Um, not necessarily me because I'm very busy, but <laughs> but your doctor, um, GP, for example. Just And if you're ever unsure about health, because I know a lot of patients coming to um, GPs and they don't ask enough questions in terms of how it works. So if you're ever unsure, just ask your doctor to explain a bit more about you so that your concerns of any problems you have um, the anxiety caused by that goes away. Basically. Absolutely. And one of the good things you mentioned as well is obviously we've all got different tailored examples for optimum health and there's not a one formula that fits all. It's about listening to our own bodies. And, and one of the things you touched on earlier, events that people can do is obviously get a gut test because as you say, the gut is the root of so much. And so really good drinking food. lots of water as well. Water to clean, clean the gut. Uh, often we're feeling hungry and the reason we're feeling hungry is number one we're craving carbohydrates because we're burning sugar rather than fats which are more sustained energy uh, the fats are more sustained than the sugar but also we're not drinking enough water so that's the other massive thing always have so much water i know you do as well vince it, it's huge right as well. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah water's um one of the most important things for health I would actually go as far to argue it's about 80% of the picture. Yeah. Um, hydration is so key. Coming from a brain perspective, if you have a dehydration level of just 2%, your brain function in terms of cognition, thinking ability, decision making goes down by 30%. There was quite a really solid wow. done on this. Um, so there's scientific um, evidence to back this up. Um, I find that statistic staggering. Like, so I, I really try my best and I've been doing 75 hard for a while now. So drinking a lot of water is really good for you. And when you think you've had enough, you probably not haven't had enough. <laughs> so. you know, that's it. And, yeah. and as you get used to the water adaptation as well as humans, don't we, it almost becomes second nature, doesn't it? You get so used to it because your body, you, your gut that's starts to crave more water and your body starts, starts reminding you, you need your, five liters of water a day <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly you and everyone's different so um just coming from a doctor's perspective i have to leave a warning here if anyone has any kidney problems yeah any, any reason why they can't drink a lot of water don't ignore this advice because that you're at certain circumstance where i wouldn't recommend drinking but for everyone else just drink enough and my pro tip um for everyone at home is look at your pee color if your pee color is really dark yellow, it means you're not drinking enough, you're dehydrated. If it's almost clear, that's a good level to be at. <laughs> mm, great point. I, I like that. It's, well, that's the, it, you know, results don't lie, even in the toilet. Exactly. <laughs> not many people are willing to talk about the pee, but as a doctor, I'm more than happy to talk about bodily fluids and everything else. Love it. <laughs> awesome. So we're, we have what time is it i've lost track getting really into it nine o'clock 
No, it's good. It's probably a good place to end it. So um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, Matt. I know you're a very busy guy as well as myself. Um, so it's probably, a, unless there's something you want to add, we can get into no, it. I, I, I just, you know, I'd love to know, but how, how can I add more value to you and your community, Vince? Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of what you're doing and, you know, know that I'm here as well to support. So if you've got any ideas on your mind, it's more than happy to hear those too. Great. And um, maybe in the future we'll have you back, depending on what else. Yeah, absolutely. I know we didn't talk too much about real estate today. So obviously if people want to learn more about real estate investing and, and the them. reason why I don't talk so much about that in an internet in an initial conversation is because it really doesn't matter until the foundations are right. set. And I really as respect you for saying that because not everyone will do that. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean most people will try and teach and, and give just the technical information, but what's the point of me teaching anything if you're gonna do nothing with the information because the level of consciousness isn't set yet. So mindset first, as you say. Mindset is the cure all to taking action in alignment with our truth. So Totally agree, Vince. Uh, thank you to Matt Saltis, the first um, guest lecturer on the Brain Training University podcast. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Um, any other ending points? Oh, I should probably um, I'll leave with one question. Um, the final question will be, uh, what is your favorite tool um, to get your brain health right? <clears throat> right, either one. Yeah, so we touched on a we touched on a couple today in terms of hacks that we can use. But my ultimate, I'd say my ultimate brain hack is choose to live an inspired life. If you live an inspired life in alignment with your purpose each day, and you can look in the mirror and say, "If I was to die tomorrow, would I be happy with what I'm doing?" You know, the right. Steve Jobs question it always goes back to that, and there's no better leader an icon to look at in terms of how he's had a fundamental footprint on the, left a fundamental footprint on the world and lasting legacy long before his his time in his physical body you know and, and his legacy lives on because of the impact he made in his life living an inspired life so my one purpose in life is that is really to accelerate our transition to an upgraded life. So hopefully we've helped reconnect some people to their true purpose here and, and ultimately what, what it is that deep inside of them inspires them. Because if we're living an inspired life, that is the cure to so many mental ch challenges that we feel today. I really do believe that. Yeah, that's a really great point to end on. Thank you again, Matt Saltis, Upgraded Investor on Instagram. Check him out if you haven't already. Thanks so much, Vince. Absolute pleasure, mate. Take care, buddy. Take care. Yeah. All the best. All the best. Thanks, mate.